The formula for wealth, and um, it is W equals to V plus Fe times L. You can write it down so that you don't ever forget it. W, which is wealth, equals to what? V plus F E times L. You got it? So W simply means wealth. V there means value. You know, we've been talking about value for a while, right? Come on, right? Value. Then F E means fair exchange. Then L means leverage. So, you want to be wealthy? You must have value. And your value must be exchanged. Your value must be exchanged. Then you must leverage. You must leverage. So we're, that's what we're doing in this Money Academy. We're taking them step by step. We are still talking about value. Then once we're done with value, we step into FE, fair exchange. Then we talk about leveraging. Is he okay? All right, so what is value? Value are simply desirable and estimable characteristics that have economic value. Desirable and estimable characteristics or qualities that have what? Economic value. We started to say that values must be processed into valuables before it can start to pay you. You can have value and be broke. So your value, that character you have, that idea you have, that concept you have, must be processed into valuables. And what, how do you do that? You must process your value into an exchangeable format. It must be a product before you can start to exchange your value for money or for cash. Wealth starts from value. Wealth starts from value creation. Wealth starts from what? Value creation. The found, found, foundational starting point for wealth creation is the creation of what? Value. I like how the ancient Hebrew word for money is um, configured. The ancient Hebrew word for money is kesef. Kesef. K-E-S-E-F. Kesef. K-E-S-E-F. And in kesef, there's a root word in that kesef, and that root word is kaf. K-E-F. The word for money in ancient Hebrew is kesef, and the root word for kesef is kaf. And kaf simply means or suggests the palm of your hand or the soles of your feet. The palm of your hand or the soles of your feet. And this suggests how wealth is created. You know the Hebrews are the wealthiest in the whole world. You know that? The Jews, they are the, they are the wealthiest. So to them, traditionally, the way money is seen or wealth is created is that they represent it with the palm of your hand and the soles of your feet, meaning that the way you add value to anything is through the workings of your hands. Your brain, your skills finds expressions through the works of your hands. For instance, you can take the normal ground nuts and work on it and it becomes peanuts. Is it okay? So they say one traditional way of adding value 
is by the work of your hands, represented by the palm of your hands. They also say, also another way to create wealth is by the soles of your feet, meaning that you can create great wealth by using your feet, by taking something from where it is produced to where it is needed. Are you still here? It's as easy as that. So if you are not a rocket scientist to use your hands, you can use your legs. Is it okay? Now, the Igbos have become very wealthy people in Nigeria because of one. One primary, one primary approach. What that approach? The use of their feet. They take, they go to China, bring things from China where it is cheap and where it is produced, and bring it to Nigeria where it is what needed. Praise God. Sham, are you still here? So, anybody here can also use it. There are a lot of things that are cheap and available in Abba that is needed elsewhere. Just Portacot here, just Calabar there, just Enugu there, just Oweri there, just Abuja. Just by taking things from this city and taking them to where it is needed can make you a millionaire. Are you still here? Whilst others are waiting for people to come to Abba to buy, you should take it and go. Anybody that is in this town that is broke is lazy or is ignorant. So, you can create great wealth without being a scientist or a rocket scientist. You can create great wealth by just using your two legs. Shall glory to Jesus. I can't hear you. Shall glory to Jesus. So, we know that it is God's responsibility to bless you but it is your responsibility to prosper. But guess what? You cannot prosper unless you have a product. What is a product? A package solution. Are you still here? What's a product? Something that someone can buy. What's a product? Something that confers value to another person. What's a product? Something that meets a need. So, you can use your leg and transport other people's product from point A to point B and make great wealth from it. Or you can use your brain and create your own product. What's a product? Is they are either goods or services. So when we hear product, don't limit them to goods. Services are also products. Are you still here? If you're Haitian, I'm still here. So you become wealthy when you are able to solve real problems for real people. You become wealthy when you are able to solve real problems for what real people. People. The bigger the problem you solve, the more cash you will receive. The bigger the problem you solve, the more cash you will receive. A bank manager solves problems for a bank. A gate man to the bank solves problems. The clerk in the bank solves problems. But they don't end the same thing. Why? Because the level of problems they solve, they are different. Are you still here? So it is the quality the size and the importance of the problem that you solve for people that determines how wealthy you will be. And who you solve those problems for. Praise God. Shout glory to Jesus. So valuables are products. So the starting point for creating a product or for marketing anything you want to market, starting point for creating a product or for choosing a product is that that product must be in alignment with your passion. Because it's easier said than done. Every business will face challenges. There'll be obstacles. But there's something that empowers you to overcome obstacles. There's something that empowers you to stay and keep doing what you're doing until it starts to pay. It is passion. The reason why people move from business to business is because they're not passionate about what they do. When you're passionate about what you do, it's difficult for you to move around. So, passion gives you stickability. Today you'll try that, tomorrow you try that. It's because you are not pursuing your passion. Shout passion. So, find your passion. What is your passion? Whatever that makes you happy. Whatever that gets you excited. 
So you must ask yourself this morning, what am I passionate about? If you, if you love fragrances, if you are passionate about fragrances, then, then if you go into the perfume business, you will do well. You will do well. You mustn't uh, produce perfume because you love fragrances. You can sell it. You can sell it. If you are passionate about fashion, you will do well if you go into the fashion industry. Why? Because passion releases your creative juices. Passion. See, you don't pray much for creativity when you are doing what you are passionate about. Passion enables you to talk about what you are doing. Passion makes marketing easy. When someone is marketing what they are passionate about, it is easy for them. Easy. Number two, I'm, I'm running because I'm sure this is basic information. Personality. Your product must be in line with your personality. Your personality here refers to the areas where you are naturally talented. We are naturally good at, naturally good at. One is passion, what you like. Number two is what you are good at. It's important that you know what you are passionate about and what you are good at. Oftentimes, what you are passionate about is not what you are good at. Mm, 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 mm. I love music. I'm not good at singing. So, it would be stupid of me to go into the music business as a singer. But I can do well if I go into that business as a seller. I see here. So it's always good when your passion and your personality match. Always good. Always good. Success becomes more predictable when you are operating within your natural habitat. Let me say it again. Success becomes more predictable when you are operating within your what? Natural habitat. Sometimes people ask me, how do you write all those stories you write for Caruso? How do you write all those stories? How do you get inspiration? I said, me, I, I'm, I'm a storyteller. I just, I talk. I love to talk. So all I'm trying to do is to put my stories into stories, into uh, movies. And I can write stories from now till they came to come. That's my nature. That's my nature. So what are you good at? If you take a fish out of water, the fish will die. A fish does not require swimming lessons. But per adventure, you subject a fish to swimming lessons, it becomes the best swimmer on earth. But naturally, a fish never requires swimming lessons. You take, take the fish out of the water, it will die. But he put it back into water, oh my God. The genius of the fish will be easily deployed. Some of you are struggling doing what you are doing because you are not good at what you are doing. One, one of the truths you must, you must get this morning, or one of the most foundational questions you must ask yourself is, am I good at what I'm doing? Am I naturally good at what I'm doing? Or am I doing it because others are doing it? Likewise, copying someone that is doing what they are naturally very good at, you will never be like those people. You are at your best when you do what you are very good at. You can excel when you do what you are naturally very good at. But the point here is that we are more intelligent and more enlightened than God. God that gave you that gift knows why he gave you the gift, but you reject it and you are attracted to another man's gift. Why? Because that man has polished and washed and starched and ironed his coat of many colors. So, okay, because they shine it, that's where we should go. No, sir. God gave you a gift. There are some areas that you are very, very, very good at. Find a way to turn your natural talents into products. It is very important that you discover the problems that your personality can solve passionately. Did you get it? It's important that you discover the problems that your personality, your abilities can solve 
passionately. Passionately. Problems that your personality, your natural abilities can solve passionately. I have seen people pursuing things they don't have the right personality for. It is one thing to have passion. It's another thing to be good at what you are passionate about. <laughs> Your passion and personality, they are completely valueless unless it can find a problem it can solve. See, your passion, your personality, they are valueless unless you can find a problem that these two can solve. Because problems give your passion and your personality value. It is problems that actually give your passion and personality value. So if you are among the ones that are shouting, there are so much problems in Nigeria, then you are ignorant. Without problems, there's no room for wealth creation. I, I wish you can get this. Without problems, there's no room for wealth creation. Let me tell you the truth. Some of you that are businessmen, some of the businesses that you are doing here, you cannot do them abroad. You cannot. Say you open one shop, say I'm opening shop to say close. Who will buy from you? How can you compete with Walmart? You go to China, you import 100 jackets. Walmart imports 1 million of those jackets. At what price? So, see, Nigeria, the way Nigeria is, is our opportunity for wealth creation. You must change your paradigms. If there's no problem, there's no room for wealth creation. If government was building houses in the states, there won't be room for real estate companies. If government was doing schools like abroad, there won't be room for private schools. If Medicare was free like it is everywhere in the Western Hemisphere, there won't be room for those our small, small hospitals and clinics. If there was transportation, state transportation, there won't be room for keke. Bus drivers, no, no, no room for that. So, the things you are complaining about are actually the canvas and opportunity that God has given you to create wealth. If there are no problems, your personality, your skills, your talents, your education, your experience, and your passion have no value. If people don't have clothing problems, there's no room for tell us. If people don't have entertainment issues, see, pay attention. The reason why nothing sells in Nigeria like entertainment is that there's so much problem in Nigeria. So much problem. So some people are making massive gain from the problems of Nigeria by making you laugh. You will pay anything just to laugh. That's why you're on social media, you see a preaching from your pastor, two minutes, you don't even click on it. You don't, you just say, uh, uh, pastor, uh, 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 pastor, uh, uh, this is what they do the talk. <laughs> you see one, Macroni, Mr. Macroni. <laughs> you are doing well. <laughs> because you're under pressure. That's why any music that comes you, you dance into it. You are under pressure. Everything you want to be. Because problems are simply the canvas upon which wealth is created. So, look for problems. Don't ever complain about problems. Learn to maximize problems. Learn to take advantages of problems. Okay, my one problem, people come to our area, what's their, what's their, pro, what's their problem, what's their complaint? Hmm? Tell me, okay, people that go to our area, what do you complain most, most about our area traders? Huh? Bad road, what else? Huh? 
flood. Uh, that one, you can't change that one. What's the next one? <laughs> People telling you lies. People telling you lies. People selling fake as what? Original. Dirty shops. Harassment. So if you make up your mind to solve that problem, you will stand out in our area. It's only a matter, it's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time. When people complain about flood in our area, find a way to take the products to them. I mean your big customers. That's why I believe God that the next millionaires in this city are young people. The next wave of millionaires, they are young people who are now involved in digital marketing. Because some people, when they remember how they will swim to enter a real area, they will buy online. So that problem of a real area is creating wealth for people like Choya, people that will sell online. Some people say, ah, but, I say, Chai, oh, I need to buy a basic, I'll ah, buy a game, Chai. But can you sell to them digitally? Can you sell to them digitally? Can they buy, and if they don't like what they bought, can you change it for them? The reason why people don't buy online is because they're not sure of what they're getting. Can you solve that problem for them that what they buy is what they get? It's difficult because even when I buy, you go and buy my, they take this matter, it's not wrong. It, it's, they, will tell, they will tell you this is original, original. Italian, Italian. By the time you get home, <laughs> and put it in water. All the colors of the rainbow. Come on. Let me teach you something. You don't make profit from your first sale. Greedy people make profit from their first sale. Real businessmen make profit from repeated sales. And they overflow from referrals. There can't be repeated sales unless you wow the person the first time. And there can't be, there can't be overflow unless there are referrals. And there can't be referrals unless the people you wow, you continue to wow them that they started to talk about you. That's how great wealth comes. That's why you are broke. That's why you hear people say, he used to be rich and now he's poor. And what do they say? It's from the village. But the man used his hand to empty his business because he doesn't know the level and the amount of bad publicity that is surrounding his business. So you are busy praying, Lord, say, Lord, oh, oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, every witch from my village, die. Every witch against my business, die. God said, you are the witch. If anybody must die, you need to die. You are the witch that have been keeping your business down because you have been cheating people, you have been lying to people, you have been defrauding people, and guess what? Your publicity, your brand is now very, very strong. Praise God. So can you, can you, can you change that narrative? Can you change that narrative in your, in, your, in your sphere of endeavor? That your word is your word. That when you say A, A is A. If you do that, you have solved a major problem. And guess what? Resources will follow you. God bless you in Jesus' name.